Welcome to the Brother Henry and You Show. I am your host, Henry Harris. Welcome back to the Brother Henry and You Show. I am your host, Henry Harris. Thank you so much for taking this opportunity to watch. I want to first of all say thank you so much to all of you who have um, taken the time to share these sessions. Um, we're on session six now, but many of you have been very committed um, in sharing these. My motive is I want to get this out there. I want people to know that there's freedom from religious trauma. So I want, before I even get into this, I just felt like I need to let you know and want to say thank you for doing that. We still have several more to go. We're into week six. And uh, I was going to stop at session five, but I wanted to keep it going because there's so much to unpack about this subject. And... Um, Today I want to talk about religious bullying, how to spot a religious bully. And the reality is, is that religious bullies are everywhere. Bullies are everywhere. And many of us have had our share of dealing with bullies, uh, well as in our workplace or well as in our school environments and just in general, just in everyday living, all of us have been bullied by something or someone. I remember when I was in school, when I was a little kid, I was bullied often. Um, and it makes you feel a certain way. It makes you feel bad about yourself. When you have somebody that's more powerful and more bigger and more intimidating to do that. Well, in the context of religiosity, that's the same way. Religious bullies comes across as intimidating and powerful and bigger. And their job is to intimidate you and make you feel bad or less than. Bullies are often hard to avoid. And they can be very aggressive. In this session, I want to discuss uh, religious bullying and how we can spot it. And what I mean about spotting it means that ways that you can identify it. Like when you see it, you can say, that's a religious bully. But also, I want this to encourage you in the aspect of learning how to not tolerate it. You don't have to tolerate any bullying in general, but especially a religious bully, you don't have to tolerate it. I believe in my heart that until you learn about it, you will be able to deal with it more effectively. So let me first of all say that um, I know firsthand how it feels not only to deal with bullies in the secular world, but I have dealt with them in the church world. Have you dealt with religious bullies in the church world? It is very common to deal with bullies in the world. But it's another thing to deal with bullies within the church. Trust me, there is a huge difference. Did Jesus ever bully anyone? Did Jesus ever make himself into this powerful figure that was intimidating and going out inflicting pain and wounding people and hurting people? I think not. So there is a huge difference. We must understand that bullying is not okay under any circumstances, and neither is it okay for you, you to accept the behavior of the religious bully. If you're being religious bully today, don't you dare say, well, I deserve it. It's okay. It's normal. This will never change. 
No, you have to change the narrative. You have to change the way you think. You have to say, no, this is not okay. I don't have to be religious, uh, experience religious bullies in my life. I don't have to tolerate bullying, period. You have to say that. You have to set boundaries. You have to set the standard when it comes to religious bullying. I don't care if it's coming from a Bible study group, a church, or any religious organization. It may be tough dealing with a religious bully. But you must stand your ground. Religious bullies have many motives, but one of the motives that they have is to traumatize you. If you have notes, you may want to write that down. There's their, that's their main goal. That's their method. That's their objective. If you want to call it an agenda, that's the agenda of the religious bully. Is the overall, they want to traumatize you. And oftentimes, they use scriptures to do that. They use scriptures to bully you. They are highly aggressive. As I said earlier, they are highly intimidating. And also, they are very forceful. There are times a religious bully may attempt to make you feel less than or they may make you feel bad maybe for something that you don't know or aware of. So they will try to demean you and dehumanize you and devalue you because of something that you didn't know. Just here recently, not too long ago, there was a uh, young lady who experienced religious bullying on my Facebook page and I had to take care of it because she shared her thoughts from a scripture that she felt like God laid on her heart and then this guy comes over and pretty much tells her these words. You need to read your Bible. Now many of you may say, well, that's not religious bullying. Yes, it is. Because you're insinuating that she hasn't read it. So now you're bullying her to affirm and to adapt to your way of thinking instead of her being an independent thinker and thinking for herself. Maybe she has read her Bible, but have you read yours? You have to understand their motivation. You have to understand the schemes. You have to understand their tactics. They are not on your side. A religious bully is not on your side. They have a goal, and that goal is to hurt you and to bring you down. That's all that bullies do. Religious bullies don't care about the damage that they cause in your life. They don't care about how hurt you are. They don't care about how they traumatize you because... They get pleasure in inflicting pain on the vulnerable. There is something about standing up to the religious bully and telling him or her how you feel. Keep in mind that by doing so may not change their behavior because you can't con control the bully. But it will send a strong message. It will send a strong signal to the religious bully that this person means business. This means that whatever tool they are using to traumatize you, you reject it. And also, you do what most bullies hate, and that is ignore them. If you want to see a, bull, a religious bully get frustrated with you and angry with you, just ignore them because bullies does not like being ignored. Simply ignoring a bully, uh, religious threats and walking away robs the bully from their own power. They already think they're powerful. So if you refuse to give them that type of authority and attention, they feel like you're robbing that from them. Religious bullying is a big deal and it must be dealt with. No one, no matter who you are, no one deserves to be treated like that. No one deserves to be bullied. No matter who you are, what you are, and where you are, nobody deserves that. You cannot be a believer and a bully at the same time. You do not represent the true nature of Christ using your platform to bully people. 
Just like any bully, they aim or focus on picking on someone that they think they can have power and influence over. That's what most bullies do. If they think they can have control you and have power over you and influence you, they will try to do that. So you got to be brave. You can't be naive and say, oh, it's okay. No, it's not okay. How many times do I have to say that? It's not okay. You have to stand up for yourself. We're talking about religious trauma. You got to stand up for yourself. Many people today, even on social media, you are being religiously bullied daily and you can't spot it. You can't identify it. You think it's okay. You have accepted it. You have normalized it. I see it all the time. Even on my page, it happens. But when I see it, I block them with no explanation because you don't have to entertain that. You don't have to deal with that. They throw your posts and they bully you in the comments section. And we sit there and allow them to be negative within your space. How often do we do that? How often have you allowed somebody to bully you on social media or even in real life? How often have you allowed a religious bully to not only come into your space and hurt you and traumatize you and do you wrong, but you have allowed them to violate your space? This is where you need to seriously set boundaries. I mean seriously set boundaries or they will continue to hurt you or they will continue to traumatize you. Bullies hate boundaries. Boundaries doesn't always keep us from being hurt or traumatized, but at least it will eliminate a lot of it. But you have to first of all start it. So what is religious bullying, if you may ask? Religious bullying occurs when a religious or religiously unaffiliated person chooses intentionally or unintentionally degrade another person emotionally, mentally, or physically. A religious bully will degrade you for many reasons. And here are a few reasons that they may degrade you. Number one, maybe you don't share the same beliefs as they do. I see this happen all the time. And we got so many people that has vast beliefs. Their, their, their beliefs are very diverse. I've said this and I'll say it again. Nobody believes the same. You may have some people that may believe, share the same beliefs. That's good. It's great to connect with people who, uh, where you have the same faith or you may believe the same things. But at the same time, if you run into somebody that may not share the same beliefs as you or share the same faith as you or believe as you or like you, that doesn't give you a right to bully them or to treat them differently. Number two, failure to be in agreement with them or how they view Scripture. That's kind of like what I just said about number one. Sometimes people are bullied because you're not agreeing with that person or maybe their narrative or perspective of how they see things. Number three, they are very aggressive and angry. Number four, they are famous. A religious bully, pay attention, is famous for attaching labels to you. They will call you a deceive, a liar, false, and oftentimes, it comes from their own insecurity. And secondly, they do it because what you're talking about is something that they do not understand. Number five, and I've seen this happen a lot, a lot. They will insult you or even go as far as cussing you out. Number six, they will make you feel as though they alone have the truth. You don't. You don't have the truth, but they have the truth. And you have to come into alignment with their truth. That's religious bullying. Those are just a few, and the list can go on and on. I'm sure that um, many of you today probably have um, a whole lot more. Using your faith against someone or your spirituality against someone is just simply wrong, especially when it revolves around bullying someone. You need to get this in your spirit today that you have a right to believe what you believe. You have a right to share your thoughts, even if it's not in alignment with the bully's perspective. 
You have a right, just as they have a right. Even though they are using theirs for the wrong reasons. So many people have been traumatized by religious people, and it's very sad, and it needs to be brought to the table. This should not be happening. If you're watching today, you would understand that. You have the right to be treated with respect and honor. And if you don't feel respected and accepted as who you are within your space, you might want to change who you are spending time with. I don't care if it's a Christian friend. I don't care if it's a church. If they are bullying you, you need to remove yourself from that person, place, or situation. Remember, you don't have to change who you are to fit, to be like someone else or anyone else, as a matter of fact. They may not share your beliefs. They, might not, they may have a different faith. They may have a difference in uh, opinion or perspective on things. They may not even be a believer. They may not even be, quote, unquote, saved. This still doesn't give you a right to religiously abuse them and bully them. It is important to be able to spot a religious bully when you see it. And, and I want to share with you how you can spot one. Here are some indicators. Number one, a religious bully, they have a sense of entitlement. They feel and believe that they are entitled to certain things. Religious bullies believe that the rules do not apply to them, but they do apply to you. Number two, uh, they have difficulties managing their emotions. Remember I said earlier they're very angry and aggressive? Oftentimes this happens when they lose control over the, or power over the person that they are bullying. Number three, religious bullies are often aggressive and assertive, and they do not attempt to hide their aggression or even to be in denial about their aggression. Number four, they violate your boundaries, and don't let them do that. Whatever rules you set in place, they tend to ignore it and step over those boundaries. If this happens to you, you really need to cut of all connections with that person. Number five, they speak down to you and sometimes they even try to embarrass you publicly. Number six, they manipulate you. Guilty is a bully's tool of choice. And in most situations, they will use it to, until they get their way or to have their way. Number seven, most religious bullies are very homophobic and don't like anyone that is different than them. Religious bullying is a problem in the world, and it is a strong force that really needs to be stopped today. But you can make the decision to stop bullying. And to those of you who are on the other end who are bullying people, I want to tell you that maybe you need to stop. Say no, not only to religious abuse, but also say no to religious bullies. I want you to join me next week. We're going to go into session seven, and we're going to be talking about religious trauma in childhood. We hope you have enjoyed today's program. We want to connect with you. Visit us at facebook.com slash the Brother Henry and You Show. Or visit us on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Henry Harris 100. We're so grateful you tuned in today and hope you have a fantastic day.